people are near and dear to me, okay? I've known Lydia, first time Lydia and I met was 1988 on the Long Island Railroad. I was going to visit my mother in Massapequa. Now I was getting my car repaired. Yeah. <laughs> and she saw me wearing this Tatted Kiss t-shirt and she introduced herself and, uh, you know, we've known each other ever since. It was 30 years, right? Right? And then uh, Ken Kelly and I have known each other probably about 15? 15. 15 yeah. years. Uh, he reached out to me. I helped him with his book, Escape. Yes, very well done. You know, I got to tell you, as I said, there's people in here and dear to my heart. So I'm very honored to be up here with them. So, um, all right, so we're going to start with Lydia. Okay. So, uh, as you guys know, Lydia did a book called Sealed with a Kiss. And uh, she obviously was uh, not only uh, Peter and Chris's first wife, but, she, but more importantly, she was Kiss's first archivist. <laughs> very, very cool. So I used to call her the first lady of Kiss, and it's true. She's the first lady of Kiss, you know. So, um, Lydia, if you could tell us a quick anecdote about you know uh, working with Kiss the first year and being part of that you know evolving process, that would be very cool. Well, at the beginning, it was um, you know two. I was just meeting two guys, and Peter and I went down to the village and. We met with them, and you know, Peter was kind of a rock and roll, you know, a little bit more flamboyant looking. You know, he used to dress really wild, and we walked right by him. We didn't even know it was them. But then, you know, they, they, you know, they liked the way he dressed because that was one of the questions that they asked to address. You know, are you willing to? Are you willing to dress any way? Any way you know, for, to be on stage, and he said yes. And, you know, the years progressed, and, you know, it, was, it wasn't as fast as everyone thinks, but it is, it is fast, you know, considering, um, you know, they were together from 72, and I think um, they finally got a gold album at the end of 75. So, um, that's when I stopped working, and, um, and it's been uphill, it's been uphill ever since. We bought a house and a car and a door all in one day, and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was funny, we were, we were in a hotel room once, and they were, I think it was the land to hype and glory, I'm not sure, but they, um, they were being interviewed, and, um, I think Anthony Newman said, they're all under 30, and they're all millionaires, and that's the first time they ever knew that they were millionaires, so they went nuts, and, you know, it was crazy, it was wild. Very cool. Now, here's a question. When you first started archiving, like the early Kiss appearances and taking photos of all the shows, was this just your natural inclination because you just, you know, you like to do that kind of thing? Or did the band ask you, hey, can you take photos and you know, write up all these wonderful journals for us? Because I'll never forget the first time you had invited me over to your apartment to see the Kiss archives that you had collected, the scrapbooks and the photos and everything. Now, this was back in the day, we're talking late 1980s. This is back in the day when hardly anybody saw pictures of the original Kiss without makeup, just hanging out and being casual and things like that. And Lydia was one of the very few that did that, that archived, that photographed them in, the, in that context. And so just to be, I was one of the few people that wound up working with the band later who got to meet you and got to see that stuff. And it was just so mind blowing how meticulous you were. Now was that? Yeah, well, um, I'm a bookkeeper. I was a bookkeeper. Well, I still do books for, for somebody. But anyway, I, I, I was a bookkeeper and I'm meticulous with, with numbers. So I was always concerned about what Peter was making, how much the road crew got, how much the, um, what was the, the truck rental, and I kept records in a book, in a composition notebook, like the little th thing that you have when you're in the third grade. And um, I kept those records, but I also am a pack rat. So I kept all the matches from all the hotels. Uh, I thought it would be great to have memories. And Peter and I used to say, you know, when we're old and gray, we'll sit in front of the fireplace and we'll go through the scrapbooks and we'll look at it. We'll reminisce our, our life. I mean, obviously that's not happening, but it, I got to use all the stuff that I did say. And um, unfortunately, Gene got more than me, but I think he deserved it. You know, when there was only one of a kind thing, Gene got it. He said, it's for the museum, it's for the museum. But the, 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 the museum turned out to be in his house. <laughs> Wow, okay, it's cool. So we're going to move on to Ken for a little bit. All right, so Ken Kelly, um, I was first uh, exposed to Ken Kelly's work through magazines like Creepy 
and Famous Monsters. The very first Famous Monsters that had Godzilla on the cover. Godzilla and Rodan, uh, Mr. Kelly over here illustrated. And you know his work through the early Warren days is what ultimately led to him illustrating the very first, uh, or painting the very first Kiss illustrated album cover, Destroyer. That was the very first time uh, that Kiss was actually illustrated as opposed to photographed. So can you give us a little background on that? I uh, knew nothing of KISS. As uh, Robert said, I was very busy with a full-time job with the uh, magazine company doing covers. I was doing like uh, two a week. We had four or five different covers. Famous Monsters was one of them, but there was a lot of things I was doing. The good part about this is uh, they gave me all the work I could handle, and I was getting a lot of practice. I didn't know what it was going to end up paying off for, but I was very alert and ready for anything that came along after five years of this. And when they approached me, uh, I didn't see any difficulty in what they wanted. Uh, even though the gentlemen were different heights, weights, and demeanors, they wanted four abreast, equal in size, basically. No one, uh, the painting shouldn't favor any particular individual, just the four men abreast. Um, and I just tackled it just like that. Just get as much detail as you can done in the 30 days they allow you to do it. And that's what I did. But it was the, as Robert said, the five years of preparation that made those 30 days possible. I had to take that painting back home because I brought it all in. My wife and I brought that into New York, finished for delivery, and Peter noticed that his nose wasn't shining enough. And in order to do that, all I needed was a single paintbrush and one dot of white paint and dot the nose, and it's done. And Peter made me take it home and uh, do that. And in the elevator on the way down, he actually made a sarcastic remark that he was standing behind me and I had a good judgment day right there on what I was going to do, but I decided just to, because my wife had her hand on me, I was just let it be. Because I, I, there was no kiss, I didn't know what kiss was. Even while I was there, I did it. Once I finished, I went my merry way and did not know they became millionaires. I wish to went back to my world. I mean, I, I made a lot of money with it, but uh, I went back to my world and didn't know in, in the two short years between Destroyer and Love Run. Which is great. So Ken, you know, being a kid, I was literally, you know, five years old when the live came out. Uh, I was five years old when the live came out. The Destroyer came out, however. That's when the merchandising started. So your Destroyer image showed up on like the Kiss uh, Chevy, uh, Chevy van and uh, posters and all that kind of stuff. How was it to be like, wait, I did this album cover and I'm walking around in all these like, department stores and I'm seeing my image on a ton of Kiss merchandise. Like, how, how did that feel for you to be like, oh, Absolutely oh, fantastic, incredible, and I didn't believe it at first. It was a, a few months before, from the time I finished it, left Kiss, went back to my world, and walking through a mall with my wife, one evening, uh, we saw a music store, and the entire wall, and it must have been 30 feet long, was absolutely covered with thousands of the Destroyer album covers. And you know, I walked around, and we walked around the corner. What, my God, it was absolutely a life-changing event that, that, that something I did as this little artist was that big. And that was my first notice that this was something real. That was going to be real. That was astonishing. Now here we are 45 years later, and look at the, what both of your contributions to history has, has created and established. I mean, we have little kids, the people in their, you know, 50s and 60s who are diehard Kiss fans that are familiar with both of your works, you know? So, Lydia, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Sealed with a Kiss is about and, uh, you know, what the future for Lydia Chris is, the immediate future. Okay, the book starts with, um, it's basically my autobiography, but my life is both, mostly around Kiss. 
So there's the beginning of the book is before kiss, then there's a big section of the kiss, and then there's after kiss. But there's still kiss stuff in between the after kiss. Um, I uh, took pictures when I was 16. I have the Beatles. I, I was the first one of the first pictures I, I ever took of a famous person, famous people. I was at Shea Stadium and. Um, I put that in the book, and then I just uh, started, you know, from the time Peter and I met, I started putting, you know, I have like maybe a few pages of when he was a little boy, when I was, you know, when I was young, um, and then uh, it goes on, you know, the progression of Kiss, and, you know, with the makeup that's very, very primitive, and um, when I was uh, taking the pictures, um, there was a, a, a strange man, standing next to me at like the Daisy, which is Amityville, Long Island. And uh, I was taking pictures with an Instamatic camera. I didn't have a, a professional camera at the time. So I was taking these pictures and the man just looked at me and he says, you know what, you're gonna make a lot of money off those pictures one day. And I said, how did he know that, you know? How did he even know they were gonna make it, you know? But, um, you know, the thing is, I, 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 I kept everything, so, I thought it would be so nice to, to put everything in chronological order and I wrote my story and um, and, it, um, and and I tried to put little pictures and things that went along with the story so that you know the fans can get an idea of how you know how it was on the road a little bit um, how it was to see them how it was to be take pictures of them behind the scenes, like backstage, and also like from the stage looking at the audience, and you know, the, the way they see the, the, the fans. And um, you know, I just, uh, I just have gotten so many compliments on the book. Uh, everyone just um, absolutely loves it. You know, I wanted it to be a good book, and I wanted it to, you know, Bill Coyne said to me, if you're gonna do a Kiss book, you gotta do it like Kiss would do it. And I, I was scared shit. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. And I did it. One second. Let me tell you something. Being in, from the book publishing background, to do a book totally from beginning to end on your own is quite a, quite a feat. And Lydia, you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> So Ken, what's, uh, what's in your present and your future? What are, you, what are you doing now? I have two albums I just signed for. I haven't opened them yet because of this event. I'm busy getting ready for this event. So I have two new albums, one from Sweden, one from an American band. I have, um, oh my God, I don't even know. I have about 17 different items, projects I'm working on, and I go by due dates. Who needs it? When do you need it? And if it fits into the um, schedule, uh, I take it. And I, um, I love what I do, so to me it's just another holiday uh, to work. Uh, I love it, I love everything about it. So you have um, you have two books in print right now. and uh, I have a third book done, I just haven't had the time to edit it, like you say. When you're creating your own book and you're putting it together, it's very difficult. I have all the images, but you have to have text, you have to have system and how it goes so it's very difficult. And you have to have time. Time. <laughs> which I don't have. But my biggest kill our biggest killer is time. Yeah. There is no time. You work every time your head's up you're not working. So you see your head's down, it's good and you don't see life. But it's cool. I love it. I don't get me wrong, I love it. But uh booked oh my god um, you got enough on your plate for a while. Uh, I'm booked for Europe with Man of War next uh, next eight so I'm going to spend a week in Europe with Man of War traveling around there. And I'm doing fun. Great. Okay, so... Oh, I have for both of you. Oh, okay. So I, just, you know I just wanted to say, I, I used to... I told my family when I was doing my book, I said, you're not going to see me for one year. And they didn't. They, they, they talked to me on the phone and my phone calls were limited to five, ten minutes. That was it. And I would wake up and... Two in the afternoon, work until seven in the morning, and then sleep for five hours and start all over. All right, guys. So unfortunately, the panel has to end in about ten minutes because they got something else going on. So I'm going to take two questions for Lydia and two questions for Ken. Who, you're the... How you doing? My name's Ray. How you doing, both of you? Yeah, please. 
I think you're incredible. It's fighting the world and, and everything. Do you have any band my albums coming up? I mean, like you said, you're going to meet them and tour with them. Do you have an album coming up for them? I'm working on it right now. It's half done. He already made the t-shirts. I don't have the back half done. I'm waiting for him to give me instructions. You don't do anything before he says to do it. But yeah, I'm working on one right now. Joey DeMail, he says, we're going to wrap this one up and go on to the next one. And I want, before you get involved, I want you and Joe, uh, April with me in Europe. So, in other words, continuing thing. Good luck. Uh, we have a mutual friend, I think Bob Wilson. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. He said, friend. I will, I will. He moved to California. Oh, he, oh. he did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he used to send me. I know. He's written nothing but nice things about you. Uh, yeah. He got me a picture uh, for you. Okay. He sent it to me. First off, I just want to say we have a little bit of royalty here because Lydia's boyfriend is Richie Fontana, who was the drummer on Paul's solo album, played with Piper, played with Laura Branigan. I don't want to let that go unnoticed. I don't, I, I, why did I play the drums because of that man? Good. Anyway, um, simple question. Who's the cheapest out of the four members of Kiss, Lydia? Um, <laughs> I, I think me. Good answer. All right, one more question for Ted and one more question for Lydia. Anybody want to ask a question? Question? Yeah. Okay. Who approached you guys to do the album covers? Uh, it would be Boyne sent Dennis the, the, the art director out. They tried to get another artist, it was too expensive, and they told him to go into the streets of New York, look on the newsstands for whatever artists were current. One of them. And they grabbed a bunch of magazines, Dennis, brought them back upstairs, and the way I got it, Gene just picked me. With sheer faith. Sheer faith changed my entire life with that single finger. And thank God. So, I love you. Uh, one last question for Lydia? You have a question for Lydia? All right, I have a question for Lydia. Okay. So, uh, as I understand it, Sealed for the Kiss is in second printing, correct? Okay. All right, so uh, what's uh, what's the future for Lydia Chris? What's happening? Oh, I hate that question. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. I mean, I'm getting a hold. I told you, you know, at one point I said, you know, when I first did the book, I said, I'm going to have to be doing book signings in a wheelchair, you know, like they wheel me in, you know, but um, um, I have... Um, I'm still selling the book, and I have a, a little job, you know, like I said, I do bookkeeping, but I really don't have any future plans except maybe to move out of the city and, and finally uh, get a little bit of room in my apartment, because like I said, I'm a pack rat, and um, i got to get rid of some stuff, and you know, that might be my next move is trying to get rid of, rid of stuff. <laughs> So the auction wasn't enough. You still have more. <laughs> I have more, yeah. I have more. But there's some things I really want to say. You know, I have want the, the People's Choice Award and I want the, the best controlled singles. Um, you know, but uh, there's a few things I have in the base. Oh, I have the original pistols. Um, but there's some of the stuff that I want to get rid of. Like, I don't, you know, I have the big destroyer dolls, but I'm not really, you know, they're too big. They're, they're all my way. And I also have the, what do you call them? The, 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 the other ones that are about this big. The mantles? No. The clutch No, they're, they're, they're. The ones when you were used? Pandas. Oh, they're just panda bears. Oh, sure. okay. All right, well, we'll be on the, uh, we'll, obviously, you have a website. Actually, uh, well, um, Backstreet Auctions is where I auction off my stuff. So it's backstreetauctions.com. Backstage, backstage okay, and Ken, your website? KenKellyFantasyArt.com. Okay. That's not my website. No, no, what's your website? My website is uh, www.lydiachris.com. Okay, all right, great. Thank you. Guys, please give these guys a round of applause.